had here about 15 minutes ago after a very, very nice uh, evening or uh, night at the uh, Quality Inn. Very good. I uh, really enjoyed that. I, as a matter of fact, I didn't even get up during the night. So uh, I guess that's what uh, eight hours of flying does to you. Anyway, I got the planes all ready. I got her untied, as you can see. And uh, she's all fueled up. And uh, looks like we're uh, raring to go. See old spots there. And if you look closely, uh, you can probably see uh, Harry. Uh, he's still laying down. I think he's still sleeping. He's down there. He's in the airplane all night. He's actually quite good. I haven't even had to let him out, so uh, we're kind of kind of lucky in that way. So uh, got a few bug splatters on her. She's uh, definitely uh, needs a cleaning uh, when she does get back home in a week or so. And uh, I guess uh, tires all look good. Uh, we've kicked her around a bit already and uh, check the fuel so everything should get uh, be good uh, anyway uh, so let's climb aboard here and uh, get the old uh, old bird going here you can see it gets a little cramped in here i've got uh, lots of stuff out here that has to be oh geez i think i did something with my knee because it's really really starting to bother me anyway uh, so a lot of this stuff has to go on the ground here yet. That's my my lunch. Anyway, uh, I'll get her all set up and I'll crawl in, folks. I'll get back to you later. Okay, folks. Okay. While we're taxiing, we're on uh, Alpha and Bemidji. It's taxiway Alpha. And uh, we're going to be uh, heading off airborne uh, or taking off on Mm. I normally 3 1. Uh, winds are pretty calm, but uh, generally, generally favoring the, uh, the northerly runway, so we might, might as well take it. I just have to do a little run up out here, and now we should be on our, should be on our way. Major traffic is Cherokee Charlie Charlie November taxi new position on way three one. Okay, I think we got ourselves settled out here. I'm not quite sure what happened on the GPS. Anyway, as you can see, another wonderful day, so uh, we're just going to direct to uh, Hawthorne. And we'll talk to chat with you later if we we'll get this problem resolved here. Okay, uh, just an uh, update here. We're just uh, in Wisconsin, and we're on the uh, route to... Uh, well, Stevens Point, 
and uh, then I've caused there's actually one waypoint in between. And uh, we're at uh, 5,500 feet, we just managed to squeak over the top to this stuff here, which is uh, kind of nice and picturesque. That's uh, why I put the uh, whip, uh, the uh, cam on. And, uh, yeah, boy, there's lots of airports down here. There's yak, yak, yak all the time down there somehow. So, uh, interesting. Yeah, there's an uh, airport, uh, let's see, there's one, two, three, uh, about four or five airports uh, within my GPS location out here, all within about uh, 10 miles of each other. So there's uh, lots of airports. Uh, that might give you some idea of my ground speed. That's 115 knots, okay? So I don't know if that is in miles or not, guys. I, uh, I have to get my little computer out. It's it's hiding somewhere. <laughs> I know I know it's pretty pretty fast for me. Uh, it's uh, probably about a hundred. I don't know. Hang on, I'll find out for you. I might as well keep this thing running here. Better just turn you off here, folks. I just got something to do here. I'll be right back with you. Now, uh, this is uh, kind of a neat thing I've got out here. Um, it uh, reminds me when I should uh, change fuel. Now, I try to change it every hour, and this thing, uh, this GPS, has a uh, warning on it, and uh, it'll alert me as to uh, when uh, I should change my fuel, uh, which is uh, programmed to do it every hour. So, this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it, uh, but it, uh, it's on the bottom here somewhere. It says, uh, Right there, it says switch, switch fuel tanks. Sun might be shining on it, but that's what it says right here, switch fuel tanks. So what I do then is uh, I go over here and I turn my my boost pump on. And uh, then I go down below here, and uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's right down in here, there's a fuel switch, and I switch from right to left. And then what I normally do is I uh, make a notation on my flight plan when I uh, when I um, when I switch it so that I can remember it as well because my memory ain't so good anymore. Uh, so uh, I make a notation on the flight plan which I've already done. And uh, then I let the uh, boost pump uh, run for uh, oh, a few minutes here. I look at the fuel pressure, making sure that it's uh, all uh, all uh, working okay. And basically the reason why you do it is just in case you get a uh, uh, fluctuation or a, a hiccup in your engine or fuel pump. Uh, I mean, I've forgotten, but yeah, it's one of those safety precautions that you normally use. And, uh, oh, things are going uh, tickety-boo here. Uh, we're uh, an hour to an hour and 32 minutes. No, two hours. We're two hours into our flight. So we got just over an hour to go. And... Uh, then we should be in Oshkosh. Now Oshkosh will be uh, tower controlled right now. Uh, the uh, the no time is in effect until Friday, and today is uh, Wednesday. And uh, just uh, so that you know, I uh, and I, I I had a feeling this was going to happen. Uh, they had a no time out for High River, uh, which is where I keep my airplane parked. Uh, that's uh, in uh, Calgary, uh, just south of Calgary, Alberta, and. Uh, uh, there's an air show going on, but the air show isn't until uh, late in the afternoon. Uh, <laughs> and I figure, well, okay, there's an OTAM out, and it restricts the airspace from surface to 12,500 feet for about, from about 5 o'clock in the afternoon on for uh, about two or three hours. And then just today, I noticed an OTAM popped up, and it says that the airport's actually closed, effective at 10 o'clock uh, local time. I think it was 1600 Zulu, unless you can get special permission. So. I had a feeling that was going to happen because they got all sorts of ground preparations they have to do. So anyway, we kind of lucked out there. Uh, we left a day or so. Well, we left a day early. Uh, we could have left, I guess, today as well. Uh, weather was all good, except uh, you know we would have got out of there prior to the uh, uh, the closure. But uh, yeah, it was just made for uh, hectic type stuff. So anyway, I'm glad I left early because the weather has just been ideal, uh, and uh, so. Um, 
anyway, here we are, and uh, I'll talk to you again later. Uh, I just contacted uh, Oscar's tower, and uh, we're still uh, 16 miles out. We're going to be reporting three miles northwest for uh, runway uh, 9. And the wind's uh, gusting, so it might be a little bit bumpy. Uh, I think it's... Uh, I don't know what the wind actually was, but uh, it's about a 40 degree crosswind I think it worked out to. That gusting to 16 knots. And we just had a couple of guys below us, uh, like uh, just to north of uh, Lake Polygon. I saw them coming and there were two of them. And uh, they looked like experimentals and they were flying formation, but they were in a climb and boy, <laughs> that is exciting. They, uh, they broke it off when they, I think when they saw me uh, coming over the lake there, uh, and they, uh, I'm not quite sure where they are now, they're, I know they're behind me. Three, sir, Victor, Oscar's ground, taxi to Niner, V Elf and Bravo. Okay, uh, way in the distance there, you can probably see. Helicopter 610, right turn, your discretion. Helicopter 610, appreciate the help, we'll be departing your uh, airspace this afternoon. Roger. Way in the distance, just off to your left there, right by the lake, the big lake, uh, you'll see uh, the open ground. That's Oshkosh. Uh, there probably won't be that many airplanes there yet. Uh, they're just coming in at ribs and drabs right now. And fortunately, I don't have to do the, uh, the recon and uh, Fisk approach. And it gets pretty hectic. And uh, done it numerous times, but uh, getting too old. Getting too old for all this excitement, so uh, I like to come early. So I'm a little bit early. I think it starts on the 28th. I think it starts on Monday. Uh, today is Wednesday. Uh, and of course, all the activity of the inbound uh, stuff. Uh, that's the inbound uh, flights. Uh, that all takes place on the weekend. So I'm here for plenty of time. Get a nice parking spot. And we'll see how it goes. So I'm now running to the uh, Oshkosh Airport. I switched tanks. Okay, my fuel pump's going to be coming on pretty soon. So my landing check, might as well do that now. And then it's 1,800 feet, so I gotta get down here. And on this guy's tower, it's uh, Charlie Charlie November. We're through to the northwest uh, right now. Uh, and uh, I guess, uh, could you get a straight in for uh, 09? Charlie Charlie November, affirmative runway 9, you're clear to land. Clear to land, 09, Charlie Charlie November. And uh, we'll be parking off to the right there, I guess. Charlie, Charlie, uh, you talking about uh, camping in the North 40? Uh, that's a firm, sir. Charlie, Charlie, November, roger. So is there a key to exit off the uh, right there? I know it's not open yet, but uh, is that uh, okay to do? Charlie, Charlie, November, there are... Uh some flagmen there today, actually, and uh, you can turn right into the grass at your discretion. Oh, we checked that. Okay, thanks a lot.
232 Yankee Echo. 232 Yankee Echo, Oshkosh. Uh, 232 Yankee Echo is just outside Pickett. We'd like to do a, a simulated air venture arrival to the runway 36. Uh, we'll break the uh, approach off uh, well before landing on 36, if that works for you. Yankee Echo, affirmative, that works for me. Report breaking it off. We'll report. Charlie November, enjoy your stay. Have a good week. Okay, folks. Well, I hope this mic isn't blowing around with the or the, the uh, yeah the wind. Anyway, uh, we're we're here, and that was one hell of a landing. I uh, there was a crosswind like crazy in here, and I just banged her down. But anyway, we're here, and we're. <laughs> I thought the gear was going to come off. Anyway, there's a <laughs> we're in row five fourteen, and um, that's uh, that's the bird. Now you'll notice. I uh, I was very fortunate. I asked the guy whether or not I could park uh, right close to the uh, washrooms out here. Uh, not that I want to be close to the washrooms, but it's uh, uh, close to the showers, basically. Uh, there there it is. And this, this is a brand new building. Uh, this building uh, was built two years ago, apparently. And uh, uh, there are co-ed showers, see, men and women. So maybe you can take a buddy with you in there if you want. But uh, anyway, so I'm parked right here. And uh, you'll notice... Way in the distance out there, that's a food tent, so that'll be good, that's run by the EAA. And then way in the distance over there, I don't know if you can see it, I'll just zoom in. There is another one, that red building. See that red building over there? Jeez, that's hard to see. Yeah, that red building, way over there. That's another shower, okay? Anyway, this field, by the time, oh, Sunday rolls around, that's another few days, we'll be full of airplanes. Okay, that's the runway there. Okay, that's the one I banged her in on. <laughs> there it is. That's runway 09. And what I'm panning over here now, that whole area, this will all be full of airplanes. Well, folks, you probably remember me parking way over there, right over, well, I can't even see it on this darn screen here. I don't know, what do you guys see out there? I don't see anything. Uh, is there some buildings over there? God, that's hard to see. Anyway, folks. I don't know what you can see out there, but way over there are the showers and the washrooms. And way over there somewhere. Okay. Anyway. I had things pretty well set up over there. Now I just follow that line down. And I don't know what you're looking at because I can't see the line at all in this screen here. And now I'm over here. There's a little bicycle. And there's my tent. And there's the 
aren't we? Anyway, I thought I'd park here, right at the very beginning of row 514. And the reason why I'm doing it is, I guess I was pretty well all set up, and I should have known better. It's nice to be near washrooms. But if you can see all those doors you've got there, see all those doors? If you've ever been in a hotel room, yeah. you know what it's like to have neighbors. Well, that's like having two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, about twenty neighbors. And even in the time I was here, you think people would hold the door? Bang! Bang! On and on and on it went. And nobody's even here yet. So can you imagine what it's going to be like when you get 12,000 airplanes here with all the people in it? And uh, so anyway, I decided to move. It was a bit of a, oh boy, it's a bit of a hike, but I did it. I even had to take the tie downs out again. Anyway, but I want a good night's sleep when I'm here. I don't want to be waking up by three o'clock in the morning by somebody that doesn't know how to hold the door. Anyway, that's my beef.